Welcome, everybody. This is Eric Rohr. I'm the owner of Sisting Hands Serving Richmond. Um, welcome to our dementia workshop. Um, and this one is the positive approach to care. And these, we've been doing these in a series of workshops. You can see we're actually on the last one in our series. And, um, and we're really, um, it's been great for us. You know, Kathy um, Hamlin, who's my executive administrator, is, um, is a certified dementia coach. And she developed all of these workshops and um, we've done all seven. All of these have been recorded and are on our YouTube channel or Assisting Hands YouTube channel. And um, I will just say this about this particular workshop is there's a few video clips in here of Kathy and I doing some role playing on um, how to you know, approach someone with dementia. Um, I don't expect any kind of uh, Oscars or awards <laughs> for my acting abilities. So um, I, I did my best though. And the, we had no camera person. We literally set up a, a camera on a, a tripod and went for it. Uh, and this was deep in the Rona. Uh, during the coronavirus. So we were kind of in our office when we were doing some of the stuff. So it was a good use of our isolation. All right. Anyway, um, welcome to the Positive Approach to Care. And I'll turn it over to Kathy. Thanks, Eric. I look forward to doing this and um, we'll get started. So today our workshop goals are to provide a brief overview of dementia. We'll go over what we've learned earlier to identify and implement the four steps to the positive approach to care, which is ultimately designed by TIPA Snow. Um, and we'll also identify resources available to the families and individuals living with dementia. But before we start, I would like to know how many of you, what type of experience you have with a person living with dementia. Is it a person you know or love or are you a professional caregiver or you just want to learn more? If you could kind of let us know where you are with that. All right, it uh, looks like we've got every, everybody's done, submitted. So, um, you know, it's, pretty split. Um, so we have some professionals, but we also have some individuals that they know uh, is living with dementia. So both this, this, this workshop is for both of those. So. Okay. Well, let's kind of review what we've learned in previous workshops. Um, one is that Dementia is the umbrella term for a person's decline in memory and other cognitive abilities that is severe enough to interfere with their daily life. It is not normal aging. Um, right now, it's estimated that approximately 50 million individuals with 5 million in the United States are living with dementia. This number is going to double almost every 20 years continuing, continuing. The more research we do, the more we learn, the more we'll have people uh, diagnosed with dementias. There are four truths about dementia that everybody needs to understand. Um, at least two parts of the brain are dying. It keeps changing and it is progressive. It will get worse. It's not curable or fixable. It is chronic and it will result in death. Um, now, a lot of times somebody else may have an under a different underlying health concern, um, but dementia is terminal. There are four main types of dementia, um, Alzheimer's being the first, um, dementia with Lewy bodies, uh, vascular dementia, and then frontotemporal dementia. There are several causes and risk factors in determining um, who will ultimately come down with dementia. Advancing age is probably the biggest risk factor, but it can also affect people as early as 40, 50, and 60. If there is a family history of dementia, your chances are really increased that it may come to you. 
Genetics also plays a huge part in dementia and um, people with Down syndrome actually are at a higher risk for dementia than other people. Thought that was kind of interesting when we learned that. Um, risk factors and brain health, um, alcoholism, drug addiction, diseases like diabetes, all of these can lead to dementia. Um, you've got 10 common sim symptoms of dementia, memory loss that disrupts your life, challenges in planning or solving problems, difficulty completing familiar tasks, confusion with time or place, trouble understanding visual images and spatial relationships, new problems with words and speaking or writing, misplacing things and losing the ability to retrace your steps, decreased or poor judgment, withdrawal from work or social activities, and changes in mood and personality. But keep in mind, just because you may have one or two of these symptoms, it does not mean you have dementia. If you've got two or more, then I would suggest that you go ahead and see your medical doctor and see what's going on. Now, until there is a cure, there is what we call a positive approach to care. There are four steps that are incorporated to provide the ultimate care and allows you to do with and not to the person living with dementia. So the four steps are a personal physical approach or PPA, and that can be visual, verbal, and touch cues that match their abilities. And then sometimes smell and taste senses are amplified as the dementia progresses when your other senses start to deteriorate. Then we have the positive personal connection, positive action starters, and hand under hand. Now it also, we want to recognize unmet needs and distress that could be physical, could be they're hungry, they're thirsty, they're in a lot of discomfort or pain, or maybe even need to go to the restroom. You also have emotional unmet needs, and that could be anger and sadness. Loneliness is a big thing. Fear or anxiety or even boredom. And then we also, to, we need to create supportive environments to make all of these connections work. Keep it simple, have really good lighting, make sure that the temperature is regulated appropriately and always make sure that the noise level is under control. All right, so we'll start with step one um, with our physical approach to care. And always remember that we need to use visual, verbal and touch cues that match our abilities. But the first thing you want to do is to pause at six feet out and to make contact. You don't wanna get into their personal space until you're invited. So as their dementia progresses, their visual abilities are going to diminish. There may be a time when they don't see your face as you approach, but you may have to put your hand up under theirs to get their attention. Greet and smile and seek social contact. Always approach with a friendly face. Um, you can kind of see what kind of mood your person with dementia is in and just kind of brighten their day a little bit. You want to slow your hand for a handshake near your face, or if the person living with dementia is slumped over, put it near their face so that they see you. Offer to shake their hand and move forward only after an okay to approach. You want to match your speed to their response time and allow about 30 seconds for them to respond. That's about how long it takes them to process one sentence. You want to match their speed, match your speed to their response time. Um, making sure again that you're going slow. Move from front to side into the supportive stance. Um, as you are moving, turn your head to the person and you're getting face, uh, face to face in the head part, but your bodies and your shoulders are kind of side by side. 
that keeps the person from living with dementia from feeling intimidated. Greet with a handshake and your name. Say, hey, I'm Kathy and you are, and give them a chance to tell you who they are. And then after you handshake, slide into hand under hand. You wanna get to a matched height, respecting everyone's intimate space. And if they are sitting, you may want to pull a chair up. You may want to stoop down, but whatever you do, do not lean in. Leaning in is getting into their personal space and they may become a little agitated. So you want to approach from the front, moving slowly. Um, but as their, again, as their vision changes, they may not see you. So you may have, they may not see you approach from the side or from the back. Uh, you need to be cautious about that. Keep your shoulders and face back and respect their intimate space. Again, that's about six feet. Use the supportive stance by standing on their dominant side, not in front of them. You do not want to appear confrontational. So it's body to the side and your face towards the person living with dementia. Get to eye level, central vision, staying at arm's length. And remember, no leaning in. And I will tell you, this is something that's still very difficult for me. I am definitely a leaner. Wait for their response before you continue. And again, remember, it takes them about 30 seconds to formulate any type of response. And you want to make positive statements like, let's try some arts and crafts, or let's try to do some laundry. Um, let them know that you are there to help. Do this, and you want to show the person what you want to do with your body. So it may be that we're doing this, something like this, to show that we want to spread out something. Um, and then, could you please help me? Uh, that kind of gives them a feeling of still independence and that you need them to help you with something. When you are approaching someone who is distressed, um, you need to show some empathy. Um, let them know that you support them and try to determine the source of the distress if you can. Let the person move towards you, keeping your body turned to the side so that you can be supportive and not confrontational. If the person is seated and you don't get permission to enter their personal space, turn sideways and kneel at six feet out. And then offer your greeting and handshake again and wait for the okay to come into their space. It usually comes at this time with a more submissive posture. After greeting, try one of two options. It sounds like you are angry today. Um, does that feel what's going on with you? Um, so you really want to try to get into their world immediately so that they know that you are empathetic and that you really care. Um, repeat their words back to you. If they say, where's my mom? You, want, you might want to say, you're looking for your mom? Tell me about mom. What's so special? And give them an opportunity. This is a way to redirect and get them to talk. If someone says, I want to go home, you could say, you want to go home? Tell me about your home. Or you could redirect with, I, I understand you want to go home, but you know, it's time to eat. How about if we eat first and then we can think about going home? That's another good, good redirect and a, and a distraction. So the things that you need to remember most are to keep your voice calm, low, and rhythmic, and very friendly. Keep it short and simple, remembering that someone living with dementia, sorry, is only retains about 50% of what you have said to them. When you are trying to do something, give them simple choices. Is it this or that or something else? Um, 
if you give them a plethora of choices, you're never going to get what you need to do done. Use objects and show them, just don't say it. Possibly hold up or point to the item that you would like to use. And you may even want to share the dislike of that particular item or task. When you are going to do task with your person living with dementia, break it down into one step at a time. Only give one part and allow them time to complete that step before you go on to the next step two in your task. Um, by asking the person to try or to help you, um, you could say, could we try this or would you please help me? It just really, again, it gives them a little more um, responsibility and they don't feel quite as left out. And always use empathetic statements. It sounds like you are angry, so you can give an emotion. It looks like you might not be feeling well today. Or it could be, it looks like you feel great today. I'm so sorry that this happened. That's not okay. And I will tell you, you will find that living with someone living with dementia, you're going to say, I'm sorry, quite a bit. And this is hard, and I hate that for you. So we're going to start with our first little demonstration. Hi, Eric. It's Kathy. How are you today? You look wonderful in that blue shirt. It brings out the color of your eyes. Are you okay? I think so. You do? You know, we've got a group over here that's doing some paint and some art. Would you like to join them? I'm not sure. Well, why don't we go try? What do you think? Let's okay. give it a whirl. Okay. Okay? Let's see, you ready? I stand on up. Okay, let's go on over to this group over here. Okay. All right, now, we, if you'll notice when I waited, I was probably six feet away before I got into his personal space. I was able to get his attention with a positive approach. And we used a, a positive action starter by telling him how great his shirt looked. And then the results were, we were able to get him engaged and willing to participate in the activity. A couple things there too. Um, we actually filmed this, I think, back in February. I uh, hit pause, Kathy. Um, oh, yeah, sorry. Um, and so we were wearing masks. This is in our office. This is in the lobby area of our office. We were wearing masks. But if you notice, right there, oh, back. We today. You. Yeah, I don't know if you saw Kathy's mask, but Kathy, back it up just a little bit, Kathy, if you can. Let's see. Just pull that back a little bit when you were kind of coming in and people can see. A little bit farther, right there. So Kathy's wearing a, a clear view mask. Um, and so again, who knows? Hopefully we don't have to have masks anymore, but who knows these days, but she's wearing a mask that you can actually see her mouth. In and you know that's uh, we found is particularly helpful when dealing with people with dementia because you can imagine um, they're taking a lot of verbal cues from whoever they're communicating with and you know I think they want to see the person's mouth their expressions etc. So that was just something I wanted to point out. It's you know it's kind of interesting. This little uh, you know we may redo these videos at some point, but this was. Definitely when we were deep in the coronavirus kind of uh, times. And so this is kind of indicative. And so you have to kind of be able to adapt yourself, keep the individual safe, but also be able to communicate. And we'll say that corona was a very confusing time for not only everybody, but especially people with dementia. Eric, my mouse is not working. Okay, there we go. Um, step two is making a positive personal connection. So when you greet them, you want to introduce yourself and use their preferred name. 
instead of uh, grandma or grandpa, you might want to say, hey, I'm Kathy. Um, or, hey, Eric, I'm Kathy. Just make sure that you use their preferred name. Um, you want to compliment them, indicate something about them that is valuable to them. Uh, like we mentioned, Eric's shirt. You're looking really colorful today. That kind of gets them in a good mood. Um, then you want to share first something about you and then allow them to respond. Hey, I'm from North Carolina. Where are you from? And then once they tell you where they're from, you might want to make a comment regarding their answer and see if you can get them engaged in a conversation. Um, to notice, you want to point out something in their environment. Um, you must love, and it could be a flower vase, seeing how well you take care of it. It could be anything. It could be flowers. It could be toys. It could be picture books, anything that is valuable to them. And then you want to seek to explore unmet needs, likes, or wants. It's like, it's a bit chilly in here. A hot drink would be nice. Do you prefer coffee or tea? And, you know, again, give them a chance to acknowledge you. Um, so acknowledge their reactions or their response. If it's positive and permission is given, then move forward with whatever task you were intending to do. If no permission is given, back away, change your approach, and then come back but do not force the situation. That only increases frustration. And remember to use your visual, your verbal, and your touch cues that match their abilities where they are today. Recognize their unmet needs and whether or not they're in distress. And then again, create supportive environments for them. So this is our next little video. I want to go home. 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 Hi, Eric. It's Kathy. How are you today? I want to go home. Oh, I know. Tell me about your home. Just want to go home. I know you do. But can you tell me why? What's going on at home? I need to be there. I understand. My dog needs me there. Okay. All right. But you know, we need to eat some lunch first. It's a long journey. How about we go eat some lunch? Can you know I go home? Yes, we can talk about it after we eat, okay? Okay. All right, let's go over here and have some lunch. And then we'll just... Okay, so in this video, you'll see... Hang on, my mouse is giving me a hard time. Um, that we had a good greeting and approach Eric, though, was in distress, and I recognized that distress. Um, and I tried to stay at eye level with him. So we determined what his unmet need was. He wanted to go home. He missed his dog. So we had a really good redirect there. And then if you'll notice, I did, not pot, I did not promise he could go home. I told him we could talk about it. And that kind of set, um, kind of, got the situation under control. I wanna go home, I wanna go home. Okay, so after you've had an opportunity to approach and connect, then you want to use your positive action starters. Um, one of them is help. Be sure to compliment their skill in whatever area that you are needing help and then ask them to help you with that. You are so good at folding. Would you please help me? Um, so anything just to, you know, tell them you are asking for their help rather than making them feel like they can't do it. You want to try to hold or to point to the item that you'd like to use, possibly sharing in the dislike of the item or the task. Could we try this? I know you don't like it, me either, but together we could get this done. You want to also try to give a little bit of a choice by using visual cues to offer two possibilities, 
or one choice with something else as an option. So you want to say this or that, but do not give more than two options at a time. Again, if you do that, then you will never get your task or whatever you needed to do done. Keep it short and simple. Give only the first piece of information at a time and maybe offer a time frame of one to five minutes to get that done. And it's like, it's about time too. And again, take a shower and then we're gonna break it down into steps with how we go about taking a shower. And then step by step by only giving a small part of the task at first and lean forward to help them stand up. This is the only time that leaning is acceptable. You want to keep it going with a thumbs up, positive af affirmation, and genuine support. And then at the end, thank them for helping you or thank them for working with you. And remember your visual, verbal, and touch cues that match the abilities where they are now. Let me see. Okay. Hi, Eric. It's Kathy. How are you today? Not doing so good? Not good. I'm so sorry to hear that. You know, it's time to take a shower. I bet taking a shower would make you feel so much better. Are you sure? No. No bath? No shower? No. Bob will take my seat. Okay. So Bob took your seat? Yes. I'm so sorry. That was not very nice of him, was it? Well, I'll tell you what, it'll be easier to get your seat back if we can take a shower and get cleaned up a little bit. What do you think? Let's go take a shower and then we'll go talk to Bob together about your about your seat. Okay. Okay? All right, well come on, let's go. There you go. Okay, so in this one. We did have a good approach at six feet, but you'll see that he was not willing to invite me into his personal space the first go round. So you have to kind of back up, regroup, and then start again. And this time, my reapproach was using empathy for what he said was bothering him. And then thanking him for his cooperation to help take a shower and then offering the solution by saying, you know, if we can get you cleaned up, you can keep your seat. So then we have step four, which is hand under hand. And this is a great way to greet and connect, to offer your support and your comfort, to guide and direct movements, uh, it also helps to assist with fine motor parts of a task to use utensils, tools, or materials. The goal is to do with the person and not to the person. And by getting into a hand under hand, um, it just, it's, a, it's not confrontational and it's a good way for you to help them get to where they need to be. Hi, Eric. It's Kathy. How are you today? Oh, I see you haven't had your water. We need to get some in you, okay? All right, can you take your mask off for me so we can drink some water? Good job. Good job. You did really well. Now let's have some water, okay? There you go. There you go. Great, you did good. So on this one, you'll notice that um, I did have a positive approach. I did stop. Hi Eric, it's Kathy. How are you today? Y'all, I apologize. My mouse is going crazy. Um, I did get on his dominant side and into the supportive stance. Um, we noticed that he needed some water. He had, wasn't drinking. So we asked for his help when we slipped into hand under hand. 
this gives us an opportunity to guide his, whatever we're doing, guide his hands to his mouth to drink, but it also lets him be taking his own drink. We're just keeping him from having an accident. And then we thank him for doing it and give him praise for doing it. And remember, we're doing with and not to. I could have just put the cup up to his mouth and had him drink, but in this case, we helped him to do it himself. Finish playing the video again, just so people can see that again after that. Okay. Description. Hi, Eric. It's Kathy. How are you today? Oh, I see you haven't had your water. We need to get some in you, okay? All right, can you take your mask off for me so we can drink some water? Good job. Good job. You did really well. Now let's have some water, okay? There you go. See, that's what Kathy's talking about. You know, my hand, while I wasn't holding the cup, actually had the motion of bringing it up to my mouth. So it allowed me to participate in that activity. Um, and um, versus, you know, Kathy just um, pulled it like down your shirt. <laughs> and, and, and also, you know, I'm going to have a cue as a person when I'm done drinking, my hand's naturally going to push down because that's what I would do to take the cup away. And Kathy's going to be able to feel that. And she's going to be able to take the cup away as well because she's going to know I'm done with that sip or drinking. So. Okay. So within our positive physical approach to care, Again, you want to connect with the person living with dementia using the following steps. The personal physical approach. Remember to respect their personal space and approach from the front. We're gonna have a positive personal connection, greet, compliment them with something of value, share first, pause and notice whether or not they have a reaction, and then seek and be curious with what's going on with them. You're gonna have your positive action starters. This is asking for help. Would you please help me? Or trying, could we try this with your choices? Is it this or that? Simplify, it's about time to do whatever task you're going to do and making sure that you give step-by-step -step instructions slowly and that you give them time to respond. And then you might also need to help the person living with dementia to stand up whenever you're doing something, but you want them to be safe and secure at all times. Remember when we're making that connection, look to incorporate your visual, your verbal, and your touch cues that match the abilities of where they are now remembering that there's going to come a time when smell and um, other things are going to come into much more of a cue than visual, verbal, or touch. You want to make sure that we recognize unmet needs and distress, remembering that they could be both physical and or emotional, and create supportive environments always keeping your person living with dementia safe and secure. People with dementia are people that we love. They're not a task that needs to be done. And this is something that I think we all forget because we're in a hurry to get something done and we just don't let them help and we just push forward. Not, not very wise of us. So we have some dementia resources for you. Um, this particular workshop was based on what I learned with Tipa Snow and her positive approach to care. Um, Tipa has a lot of resources out there for everyone, professionals and family members, and even the person living with dementia. She hosts what she calls a brain cafe once a week on uh, the internet. 
She also does uh, sessions on Facebook Live every day at eight o'clock in the morning and at five o'clock in the afternoon. She always has some really good tips for about 10 minutes. And then also there's two new streaming TV, show, TV channels that are on that promote a lot of Tipa Snow's uh, blogs and her um, dementia recordings as well. That's Peacock TV and Saltbox TV. And those are free and her, her workshops on there are also free. AARP of Virginia is also a good resource for some dementia materials. We also have DARS, which is the Virginia Department for Aging and Rehabilitative Services. They're located right down the street from us. Uh, George Worthington is the contact there and he is wonderful. He always maintains an open door policy and is willing to help you whatever way he can. And then of course, there's always the Alzheimer's Association. Um, with the Greater Richmond chapter, um, they have a new executive director, Lisa Greenley. She is also a wonderful person to work with. And if you haven't registered, you might wanna go on the uh, Greater Richmond chapter of the Alzheimer's Association. They will be having an Alzheimer's conference uh, later in the month, and it is free. It is virtual. Um, a lot of great things planned for them at that particular time. And then we also have us here at Assisting Hands Home Care. We do work with people living with dementia in wherever they call home. It could be their own home an apartment, it could be working with them in an assisted living community or even in a skilled facility. And then always, if you think you are to the point that you need for someone to be in a secure unit, Brookdale Midlothian is a great place. And I'm sorry that Brooke Brockdorf is not here to tell you about their community, but I can tell you we've worked in there with them previously. Um, it's a great community. They've got good staff and they've got a really good um, memory care program there. So now I have another uh, poll question for you. I'd like to see if anybody's interested in learning more about in-home dementia support and care or whether you are looking for a memory community. Okay, I'm just going to give it another couple seconds and then we'll kind of wrap up the workshop and then open it up for questions. Okay, great. Um, thank you all for um, participating in the poll. Go ahead and go to the last slide, Kathy, the next slide. Okay, so as we mentioned at the beginning of the workshop, this was the last in our series. Um, we've actually been through this series twice um, here over the last year plus. Um, we are gonna put a pause button. We're not gonna right now, we don't have a scheduled workshop for October um, because Kathy's working on some additional workshops that we wanna add to the rotation. And then we'll start up either um, before the end of the year or at the very beginning of next year. But I think we'll probably start up maybe in November, um, assuming, you know, either with this series of workshops as she's finishing up the other ones. But we have three that we're kind of contemplating right now. Um, one is on medication um, and dementia. Uh, that's both medications that uh, people take um, to help manage the dementia. Um, I think uh, well, to let everybody know, there is no cure of dementia right now. There's no medical, no medicine or uh, drug right now that reverses or ceases uh, dementia. But there are medications out there that help manage some of the um, side effects or the uh, characteristics of dementia. And then also how to help manage just medication around people with dementia, because that's a difficult um, 
uh, process. So we're actually working with a local compounding pharmacy and a pharmacist on that um, workshop. Uh, we're also working in a little bit more depth with some financial and legal people to talk about some of the financial and legal issues that come up with managing um, an individual living with dementia and the family. And then um, Kathy's working on one around activities for individuals living with dementia. Um, we're actually partnering with um, uh, an individual um, here locally that is actually creating dementia uh, activity boxes. And so we'll actually talk about those activity boxes, but again, the type of activities you can engage in to help um, you know, stimulate the individuals with dementia. And I, I think you know, one of the big things with individuals living with dementia is keeping them occupied and keeping them active and keeping them effectively distracted will help them from slipping into some of the more um, aggressive dementia behaviors that you know you can see, and you know that was you know we've had workshops on how to help manage those. Oh, and there's one other, and I think Kathy's putting together a final one um, is on just um, being a caregiver for someone living with dementia and kind of caregiver burnout and how to help manage that part of the whole care continuum. So anyway. Those are, we're really excited about those. Um, and so we're in developing those and um, we'll be putting those into our rotation. Um, and I'll say that, you know, we're doing these workshops on Zoom kind of because of COVID. These were all designed initially to be done in person at various communities or various venues. Um, we're now starting to do those. So if you have a need and you'd like Kathy and I to come where you are, um, geographically reasonable <laughs> for us to get to, we would um, love to come and uh, do our workshop with, you know, a group of people. We find that those are very meaningful as well. In fact, like I said, they were designed to be in person. So anyway, just wanted to kind of let everybody know about that. So I'll open it up to any questions. Um, also, I, I'll, I'll turn off the um, the um, recording here right now so we can kind of have um, you know any kind of more personal questions we can kind of handle that as well so let me turn off the recording um, now so thank you for attending our workshop